One uh, uh, on uh, September the 2nd against Ball State, and our players reporting on August the 3rd. So I'll open it up for any questions. It's been huge. Uh, you know, anytime you get exposure for your university and your program by playing in a bowl game, you know, it, it's great for everybody, student body, faculty, staff, you know, administration, alumni. Uh, you know, it, it, but most importantly, it's been huge for our young men because they, they've realized, you know, what they can do and what they should be expected to do. And now they've got to go out and, and work at continuing to do it because it's not going to come easy. and. It's something that uh, that uh, no one's going to give you. You know, with the, with the kind of job Matt Beasor has ahead of him, trying to rebuild that program at ULM, you come. Your background is a uh, program rebuilding yourself, and what you've been able to do as a head coach. And, you know, while every program is different, you know, at the Sun Belt level, what's the toughest thing about you know trying to get these programs up? Well, usually it's money. But uh, I would just say that you got to continue to stick to with you, what you believe, and don't don't change. Um, just keep pushing away. People have to understand uh, the tough. One of the toughest things is people to have patience. We live in a society where everybody wants it right now, and sometimes it's not that way. And you've got, you 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 can't change because everybody wants it right now. You've got to go out and do with what you believe in. Uh, stick to it and. Um, I understand that there's going to be some bumps in the road, but uh, you know it, it, it'll get done. Coaches, he's a good coach, uh, and they've had good coaches, and it will happen. And it's just you just got to stick with the process. Yeah. You know? Is that something you kind of dealt with yourself? Because I mean, you, look, you kind of look at your background. You know, it takes a couple of years to get these things up and running, but once it's running, you know, it, it, it goes it goes pretty well. So that's something. That's all. That's the only thing we've ever dealt with, really. You know, we we went into Indiana State. We went 0 and 12. Started 18 true freshmen. Went 1 and 11. So had winning seasons ever since. Went to George State. Started 19 true freshmen. Went 0 and 12. Went 1 and 11. And went to a bowl game. So it's a process, and and people don't understand it. And even the ones that think that they do, you know, around year number two are going, wait, wait a minute. I thought we, you know, it, it's time. It's time. And it it it. it it's different when you're at a mid-major, you know, as opposed to all the money being dumped into some of these Power Five conferences, schools, you know. So it, it, it's a it's a process, and people have to have patience and understand that you've got to go through things that you've got to fix behind the scenes long before, you know, it works on the football field. There's so much more to it than just winning football games. There's a buildup. You know, you've got to do behind everything from the academic side to the support side to the, you know, the, the training side, the recruiting side before you can get out on the field and see the, the, the benefits of, of what you've been doing. What was your stance on the championship game? On the, for us playing a championship game, I was all for it. You know, uh, I, I think it's the right thing. I think we, we made a, a smart decision. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to benefit us from exposure, and, and you know that that weekend in December, where we're playing a regular season game now, that will be a championship game. So, you know, I, I think it's it can only benefit uh, the Sun Belt Conference as a whole. Uh, I, I'm either way when it comes to that, you know. Uh, I understand having divisions, you know, when you start talking uh, logistics financially of traveling, you know, and doing things if you have them in two different divisions. I understand that also, you know, but I also understand and playing everybody, you know. So I'm fine with it either way. I, I'm a big proponent of having the championship game, but, you know, how, they, how we get to it, it's up to the, the guys above me. <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of the guys that we were that are replacing starters have been with us. Um, as far as the quarterback 
position and replacing Nick Arbuckle. I don't know that you replaced Nick Arbuckle in the stats that he put up, but you, we've got three young men that were all with us in the last season and through the through the uh, the spring and this summer. That uh, if they can just be the best that they can be, we'll be fine. And uh, you know, we, we're basically a three-man battle for the quarterback position between Amir Scaife, Aaron Winchester, and Connor Manning. And may the best man win, but uh, we're going to need all three of them. So, you know, I'm excited about all three of them. And I just need we as a team, as a program, just need them to be the best that they can be and not worry about replacing Nick and being in Nick's shoes because to, to go out there and think you're going to replace 4,300 yards, you know, throwing in, in, in one season, I, I don't know that that happens. So if they can just be the best that they can be and we can run the football, we'll be fine. No, oh, there's a lot. Of, I, I pay attention to it. Of course, it it uh, affects us, and I've been involved in it. So, you know, they do the administration. Doc, Dr. Becker, our president, and Charlie Cobb, our athletic director, have done a great job of keeping me involved in everything. And um, uh, I'm real excited about it. I mean, it's a game changer for our university, not just our football program, but for uh, Georgia State University and for the city of Atlanta. You know, there was no other entity that could come into Turner Field and say that they'd be there forever. Georgia State's not going anywhere. We're the fourth largest university in the nation with 52,000 students. We're the largest in the, in the state. We're growing every day, and we're going to be around. Georgia State's going to be there long, long after you and I are, are on this earth. So, you know, to have that for the city of Atlanta, to revitalize that area, you know, there, there's big plans of, you know, uh, retail shopping and, and housing, single-family housing to give a little spurt to that area. Uh, it, it's great for the city, and, and it's great for Georgia State University, and it's our recognition and just having our own environment, you know, for college football atmosphere. It's three blocks from my office. I can I can see I can see Turner Field from my parking lot, from the window in my office. I can see Turner Field, so it's really not any different. Yeah, so we're you know I'm I'm fine with it. I'm, it's, it's, I'm more than fine with it. <laughs> I'm ecstatic about it. You're, um, you're obviously, it's a young program, and you've been there for several years. How have you seen a growth in sort of the atmosphere around the program in terms of just fan support and, and alumni support that you've seen? I've seen more Georgia State shirts and hoodies than I've and stocking caps or whatever they call them nowadays, hats, and you know, I've seen more of those around Atlanta and the state of Georgia than I've ever seen since I've been there. And uh, it's just growing and growing. And people are realizing that, uh, you know, we're an excellent academic institution. And now all of a sudden you've got a basketball team that goes to the NCAA tournament. You've got a football team that went to a bowl game. Uh, I know baseball didn't have the season that they wanted to, but they'll be back because Greg Frady's done a great job there. And uh, they'll play well in baseball. So you've got, you know, an athletic department that is, is doing really good things under Dr. Becker and, and Charlie Cobb and the coaches at, uh, in the other sports. So, you know, George State's exploding onto the scene. And in Atlanta, it, it, it's, it's, it's growing. I mean, we, we were at 32,000 students a year ago. Now we're at 52. You know, so it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And, and you know, it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into something very special. I'm not asking the question, so feel free. <laughs> when you talk about this is kind of still growing, like that, and that leads to this question that the commissioner addressed earlier regarding the NFL's future and the NFL's future and the NFL's future and the NFL's future. How do you see the NFL's future and the NFL's future? How do you see the NFL's future? How do you see the NFL's future? Well, I think what you're going to see uh, in the next, like, I don't know how many years ago. Was it about five years ago we had a big change of everybody jumping conferences and moving? And yeah. it's been a few years. Like for 2013, it was probably the big year. Yeah. I think you're going to get one of those again. 
I think you're going to see that in the next so many years. You're going to see, you know, Big 12 expanding, and then someone's going to move here and there. So, you know, I, I, don't, I can't tell you what's going to happen, you know, in college football. I know that Georgia State is going to line up and play Ball State, and we're going to represent the Sun Belt Conference uh, on September the 2nd. But, you know, college football is with the college football playoff and, and with the money, we all know, it's all about, you know, aligning yourself, with, you know, financially. So with the money that's out there for the college football playoff system and, and there's going to be more movement in the future, I don't know how that's going to affect the Sun Belt, but uh, I know it, it somehow it's going to affect a lot of, a lot of conferences.